My dad was murdered. Sorry, go ahead. Nope, it just uh, told me that it was being recorded. Um, yeah, go ahead, brother. So, and I just ask that everybody mute themselves so we can hear the testimony well. Thank you. Julian, you're back. You can take it away, buddy. But uh, yeah. Luke? If everybody just mute themselves so we can let hear Lucas. Go ahead, Lucas. Awesome. Um, so then when uh, my dad was murdered, um, it, it started a lot of uh, pain and not understanding things. And uh, I mean, I, I had, you know, I'd already known that I was adopted and then um, and then my dad being, um, you know, murdered really threw me off. I, had, I grew up with a spirit of rejection um, most of my life. Um, it, like I told Julian that my the level of, um, of where I thought of my worth was um, in some areas, in some moments of my life that had completely depleted to nothing. And then. Uh, uh, drove me into a meth uh, addiction with cocaine, uh, marijuana, and uh, lots of drinking, very hard drinking. Um, um, I used meth and um, and other drugs for probably five years um, full time every day. And I ended up losing my tree service to drugs and alcohol. Um, I would say when I was uh, 24, I was coming to the end of myself. And I remember looking in the mirror after staying up for a month on math. Uh, I remember looking in the mirror and thinking I'm a prisoner and I don't know if I'll ever, I'll ever be free. Um, just about a week later, after I had those thoughts, I went to jail and in jail, um, I would say that jail was the best thing that happened for me because I needed time to to think and process through uh, what was going on in my life. And I needed to find out, like I, I told the Lord, I said, now it's time to find out what life is all about. I started reading the Bible and uh, I started with a King James Version. Um and I read that for a couple of weeks, uh, but it got difficult. Somebody in the jail said that there was another Bible that I could get in the in the library. So I had thought about that. And um, meanwhile, um, I had also wanted to get out of my jail stay because I had. Um, so this is kind of a background deal, but I had lost my um my dad had given me up. And when I said, you know, when I was two years old and growing up, I said in my heart that I would never do this to my kid. And here I was doing this again to my kid. And so the, the shock of it uh, drove me to think I need to get out of this jail stay. So I put a kite in the door saying, I'd like to speak with the task force. And uh, I went and spoke with the task force and they said, um, you know, you have to do certain things. And I, I, there was no way that I could follow through with what they said. They had asked too much of me. And I, and I went back to my jail, uh, jail cell and pondered. And I thought I better face uh, my consequences and know that God will use them for my good. Uh, the, the pastor in the jail uh, came to me and said that, um, God would use us all things to the good, to those who love God and are called according to his purpose. That spoke hope into me and helped me make a decision to face my consequence and go to jail, go to prison. And whatever the Lord had me to do, he would use it for my good. Um, while I was, uh, so I took that kite, I put it back in my um, my Bible, the King James Version, and I had forgotten it in there. I brought the Bible back to the library and uh, somebody else found that piece of paper in there saying that I was wanting to talk to the task force. They sent all the, they sent notes throughout the whole jail and all 65 people found out that I was um, potentially a narc. Although the Lord know, knew that I wasn't going to do that. Uh, he was the only one that knew. Um, I, I, during that time, I had found a book called The Bondage Breaker by, by Neil T. Anderson. In this book, um, Jesus was teaching me verbatim all through my situations on what I needed to do and how to do it. He taught me about authority. He also started teaching me about discerning of spirits, the gift of discerning spirits, and that 
it, it that spirits were in operation in the jail. And I had seen um, there was, you know, this kite or this letter had been passed out throughout the jail. And um, and I had a few people trying to kill me. Uh, they had fashioned a weapon and they had talked about how they were going to kill me with stabbing me in the brain. Um, I was tormented daily uh, for weeks on end hearing them planning to kill me and how they were going to do it. Uh, the jailers would always leave the doors open so everybody could hear what everybody was talking about. I stayed in the room just because there I could try to find some peace. Meanwhile, um, as I was feeling torment and fear of death, um, I was I was I was gripped by that. I was also moved by the Holy Spirit in this place where God was teaching me how to deal with this thing, and. Uh, after a few weeks of learning, I had um, I had memorized a scripture. Behold, I saw Satan fall like lightning, um, and I shall give you authority. Or, or behold, I saw Satan fall like lightning. Behold, uh, I give you authority to trample over serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means harm you. So I took the Bible and I went out there and I pointed at all three of them and I said, "You cannot kill me in the name of Jesus." I seen this dark entity leave off of all three of them and lift and they all went to their rooms and left me standing there. The one, the one guy that was actually going to kill me said, let me look at that. I want to see what the Bible says. He looked at it and then he went back to his room as well. Um, a couple of days later, they put a kite in, which is a piece of paper. It's a note to the jailers. They put this kite in the in the door and said, we can't handle this man talking about Jesus anymore. We would like you to send we would like you to send him to another another group of uh, in the jail. And so the the jailer came and um, and I was so relieved. I felt like I had been saved from this uh, trial of death and this fear of death. I went to another jail cell where there was a bunch of Christians there. And the guy that sent my kite around uh, was in there. And so I had got to share Jesus with him, share the truth with him, and that I didn't do this and I wasn't going to do it. And so me and him reconciled a few weeks, uh, probably about a month later, he accepted the Lord. Um that was a huge victory, and the Lord had delivered me. He had brought me now into a place of ministry. Uh, he used me um, for every person that was uh, in my jail cell. I, he used me either to lead them to the Lord or um, uh, pray for miracles. Lots of miracles started happening in the jail. Jesus was speaking to me in his word um, day in and day out. This is pretty much all I did. I did not uh, watch TV Um and uh, it was it was really, really wonderful, uh, you know, spending time with Jesus. He delivered me. He healed me. He started visiting me in dreams. Uh, one of the dreams that he shared with me was he revealed his face with me and said, I died for you that we would be face to face. And when he said that to me, um, his love filled every place of my body. I woke up from the dream. And, uh, and the presence was so strong uh, that I thought was in my dream was still in my room. I was shocked. I didn't know um, that he had, in that moment, he had delivered me from methamphetamine and taken the drugs from my heart. Um, I started experiencing freedom and joy, and, and uh, I didn't have any anger anymore. Um, I, um, during this time, I started hearing about Teen Challenge, and uh, and I started praying and asking the Lord to send me to Teen Challenge instead of going to jail. Um, and 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 a few months later, the Lord awarded me to go to Teen Challenge, and uh, uh, I had all of my family members there. Uh, there was like, I think there was about twelve or fifteen people in the courtroom standing for me. Um, and uh, the jailer or the, the the judge said, I don't know why I'm doing this, but I've never seen so much support in a courtroom before. He said, I'm going to allow you to go to Teen Challenge, but you if you do not graduate, you're going to go to prison for 68 months. And I and I said to the judge, I said, I'll change whether you send me to Teen Challenge or you send me to prison. And so I meant it. I had uh I had gone through a great fire in jail and I had made a decision to follow Jesus. 
Um, at the end of, um, well, just uh, so at the end of jail, um, I had gone outside and seen the sun for the first time at the jail that I was at. They did not have windows. They were all, all covered with black. You could not see outside. And uh, I went outside and looked up at the sun and I said, in my heart, I said, I have seen a light that was brighter than the sun. And I, you know, I was content. Um, uh, I went to Teen Challenge and uh, did deep work on, um, on, on, on my freedom and, uh, and building a, and being able to have a foundation uh, that could withstand the, um, the past and being able to operate in the future. Um, I, at my last, um, t my last times of, uh, teen challenge, um, God spoke to me and said that I was supposed to have a tree service and that I would disciple the men and pray for those that I would run into. And so that was the vision, uh, that the Lord gave me. I went to, um, I also had a, a, a vision of me going to this ministry school, teen challenge ministry Institute in Minneapolis, St. Paul. And when I, um, I had this vision of me on an operating table in a hospital, but Teen Challenge was the operating table. Teen Challenge Ministry School was the operating table, and Jesus was standing there with a scalpel. I didn't know what this meant, but uh, later on, a year into ministry school, I found out that uh, Jesus had planned to heal me of that rejection from my fathers, and um, and he and he sought me out. He set me up for a healing that I did not know that I had. I did not know that I had this problem deep seated inside of me. Um, God miraculously held me down in a church meeting on the ground with his love. His weight, his, the weight of his love was so powerful that I could not get up off the ground. Um, and uh, and and during that time, he, I felt this deep pain just almost like he had sliced me open spiritually in my belly. And I seen in the spirit in that moment, I, my eyes were open to seeing all this black stuff come out of my belly and all this pain. And I just weeped and wailed. And uh, I've never been the same since. Uh, this is only one healing and miracle that Jesus has done in my life. But uh, one of the most uh, crucial ones that I ever experienced because the the rejection that I felt from uh, my dad leaving me when I was two and then um, giving and giving me up for adoption and then, um, and then him being murdered. Um, so after I would say ministry school was so powerful because it gave me um, a teen challenge had built the foundation underneath me, the Lord's word, God's word had been built underneath me. And then I started building a house on top. I started building uh, my life upon the word of God and teen challenge ministry Institute gave me that time to where I could build, start building a life so that when I go outside, I would be kind of prepared um, to live a godly life. Um, and now I've uh, now I'm married and my wife is over there on the couch and uh, I have three kids, um, two adopted kids. Um, I, I, um, pretty much adopted my wife's kids. They are, they are mine now, and uh, so I'm 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 very glad for that. I love I love my my stepdad. I'm so thankful for him that he adopted me. Uh, me and him have a great relationship. Um, he's supposed to be starting working for me tomorrow because he's re he's going to plan on retiring. And um, right now I have five employees, uh, and. Uh, um, five employees and we do Bible studies every day. God charges my spirit every day faithfully for these Bible studies. It is such a blessing uh, to share God's word with these men in these Bible studies that uh, I um, it's probably even more powerful than than going to church at this point. I know it's like the Lord gives us different seasons where we are getting bread from heaven. Uh, but right now, I feel like in Bible study, it's it's so incredible uh, to share the deep things that God has shared with me with these men. And uh, 
I guess that was about uh, a little bit less than 20 minutes. So I think that was short and sweet. Praise the Lord. That was awesome, brother. That was really Amen. wonderful. That was a great, Amen. great, great message. Thank you so much for sharing. And uh, just want to just want to thank you for, you know, your openness to, to share some of those really um, personal and deep and meaningful um elements and and i just i guess i want you know that if if anybody sees this recording and hears about this um what is it that what was it that in in that moment that when you were in prison that led you to that moment of 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 conversion where you you decided to give your life to the lord um i would say it was the pressure of my uh my lifestyle um and then i went to a bible study and and I had, I had first felt like I had been saved um, when I was 19. But when I was 24, I said, I'm done. I want to do things your way, Lord. And I went to a Bible study and, uh, and the guy said, if you haven't made Jesus your Savior and Lord, it, go back to your jail cell and get down on your knees and ask him to be your Lord. And I did. I went back and I said, I want you to be my Lord today. I'm going to do things uh, your way now. What do you think it was that brought you to that point? Um, I would say that it was probably all of the, the love encounters that I had um, beforehand where God would love on me. He would show his goodness to me, his kindness to me all the time. Or not, I shouldn't say all the time, but every time I met with him, he was good to me. He was um, you know, and I just thought about that scripture that says that's the goodness of the Lord that leads us to repentance. And so, and so that as God would love on me through my drug addiction and through all my family problems, I felt like, um, that's what, you know, made me want to serve, to serve him. Hmm. Um, so it was like there were seeds planted all along yeah. the way. Come on, and you got man. to, and you got to a place of desperation, and uh, you turned to the Lord in that moment. I would say that's exactly it. That there were seeds planted along the way. Um, I tell the I tell my testimony with, um, you know, in in more depth to some people that are a little bit longer. But um, each stage of my life, there was somebody saying something to me about Jesus, and every time. I would be intrigued. And I know that that was the Holy spirit planting seeds in me. Mm -hmm. It's awesome. Amen. You know, it, there was a, a story you told me about in the midst of your, your yeah. drug addiction, you were in a, you were yeah. in a drug house and uh, someone came in randomly and just started talking about the Lord. Right. Yes. Yep. I could, I can share that. Yep. Uh, so when were I was you living there, I was living there. Yep. It was my drug house. Hmm. So when I was 19 years old, um, I moved into uh, a, a double white house. Uh, I knew that my neighbors were using drugs. I had uh, recently stolen a whole barn full of pot. The guy had literally like, it was like probably 30 by 20 of hanging pot plants. And I had stolen them and I had uh, lived off of that for some time and, um, you know, just partied all the time and lived, paid rent. I sold the pot, uh, but I sold that pot to a drug dealer and that drug dealer had cocaine. She said, uh, uh, would you like something else? I, and I thought about my neighbors that were using drugs. And so I had gotten um, I think it was like an eight ball of cocaine and that's, that's what started me on this deep road of, of darkness. And then in the midst of that, Oh, wait a minute. I had gotten in, I had stayed up all night long and I didn't tell you this, Juliet, but I, or Julian, I had stayed up all night long on cocaine, went to ride my crotch rocket the next day. I wiped out on the motorcycle and I, um, when I wiped out on the motorcycle, I, had, I had hit, um, I had ripped out a few of my teeth and broke through my, my whole jaw right here was just cut. 
Um, the motorcycle landed on top of me. It cut my Achilles tendon, so I couldn't walk. I oh. couldn't talk. I couldn't eat. And then when the motorcycle landed on top of me, it burnt my butt so bad that it went right through my pants and uh, right through the skin, and it was so bad. Um, I still have a huge, long scar the, the size of a muffler on my butt. Kind of a funny note. Um, but uh, so I couldn't eat. I couldn't hardly talk. Um, I couldn't sit and I couldn't walk and I didn't have anybody to feed me food. So I stayed in my house without any food, without any care um, and just wasted away. And then th after I had gotten better, this lady came in full of the Holy Spirit. And um, and just after a few days of hanging out with her, she had led me to the Lord with this other gentleman um, now they had, they were smoking pot as well. So this is kind of, there was some mixture. I don't agree with mixture at all. Um, but, uh, but in I, the midst of your drugs, doing the drugs here, she was telling you about Jesus. Exactly. Yep. And now uh, she was doing a better job than anybody else did at planting seeds. She, she had, she had something that I had never seen before. She was, she had, um, the light of the Holy spirit. And I know that um, it's hard to understand that um, as she was in compromise. Um, I don't, I still don't understand that completely as she was in compromise, but uh, the Lord used her and uh, it was a huge pivotal moment. Anytime I see uh, him or her that led me to the Lord, I stop, I stop what I'm doing. I'll pull over on the side of the road, get out and go, or go to the gas station, whatever. I say, thank you so much. Uh, you changed everything for me. That's great. So I, so I had two moments in my life, one where I felt like I had gotten saved and one where I had made Jesus Lord. Yeah. Which I think is really that moment where you go from learning about Jesus to surrendering your life and being born again, which is, uh, you know, that's that moment that the, that the Holy Spirit really comes in and brings that godly repentance that you and I were talking about, you know. Yeah. Um, I want to, I want to just reflect for, for the guys and uh, that are on here, there's uh, other people that are tree in the tree service business that are on that have, um, you know, given their testimonies and, and um, I, I want to talk just a little bit, you went through teen challenge and then towards the end of it, you felt like the Lord led you into the teen challenge ministry program. And now that's yep. different from the rehab program. Is that right? That is correct. Yes, that is different. How, how long, how long was that program and what did you do there? It was two years. Um, it was uh, chapel every morning um, and then classes. Um, I had pretty much everything to become a pastor. Um, and I could have become a pastor if if I had uh, if I had wanted to, I could have gotten a license for it. I didn't want to have that license, so I didn't do it, um, which sometimes I regret. But um, it was really like a, a, you know, discipleship intensive and but the the people there were so wonderful and the ministry was so wonderful um that it was so it was so like um god fearing like you would just want to be right with god in the in the presence of these people and the lord it was so wonderful um it spurred me on to uh a life of evangelism um uh, most every week i get to lead someone to the lord with my on my business, pray for customers. Um, just, mm -hmm. just, uh, yesterday I got to pray for two people that said, they said out of their own mouth that God, um, sent me to them. And, uh, it was, it was just wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. So much what that's great. So now, uh, God has given you this venue and you're discipling guys that are your employees. And, um, do you hire people that aren't believers? Um, I have hired, uh, I have hired and trained probably close to 50, 60 people, maybe more. Um, and, uh, you know, ministered to each one of them. Uh, most all of them were either drug addicts or they were coming out of jail, needed a job, needed to get their license. Um, and that is, has been a, a lot of challenges with that because you're basically helping everybody start over again. Um, but uh, right now I have uh, uh, four young young guys. Three of them have just graduated high school. 
Um, a few of them have struggled with drinking. Um, and so now they're, they're making choices to not drink and they're confessing that to me. I actually did not know, uh, that a few of them had been drinking. Um, I had thought that they were doing well. Um, but they said that, uh, they had, uh, <laughs> recently changed because of the Bible studies. So it was pretty cool. No, praise the Lord. That's wonderful. Well, that's uh, quite a ministry that the Lord has given you with um, with your with your business. And um, we continue to just thank you for sharing your testimony with us. Um, and we know that this is, is this this testimony is going to be a seed for uh, for someone somewhere uh, to really help them to see what's possible, you know, uh, because God has not only brought a business to you and you're a successful businessman and entrepreneur, but You've raised up many other men. You've trained them, and you've trained them not only in life but in the Word. And uh, it's just what the Bible says. There's such joy uh, for those that lead people to the Lord. So praise God. Amen. Well, at this point, I think I think we're done, and uh, we can probably stop the recording. Um, And um, if we, if we, whoever is recording there.